Righty, welcome to Talk Python to Me. Thanks for having me, Michael. Yeah, it's great to have you here. I think people are going to learn a lot about some machine learning on this episode, and you've got this really cool visual way, this visual tool of working with machine learning projects. And you know, oftentimes people ask me, like, hey, I'm not really a web developer, but I have some machine learning stuff, or I'm a data scientist, and I want to share it with people. How do I do that? So your project might be a, a good answer to that for some folks, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, Gradio is kind of built for that use case. I think um, you can build like lots of complex stuff with Gradio, like, you know, web apps and stuff, but you could, it's optimized for the sort of like ML use case. Like how do you get like an ML workflow, like on the web and share it with people as quickly as possible? That's kind of what Gradio is built for. Awesome. Like I've got it running on my computer. <laughs> How how do I take it from a notebook to something that other people who are not programmers can use, right? Yeah, exactly. That that's kind of it. And it's you know with Gradio, it's like one line. You can get a shareable link directly from your Colab notebook, Jupyter notebook, SageMaker, um, local, whatever. Um, yeah, so it's it's really easy to to share with with people. Excellent. All right, before we dive into that, let's start with you. Uh, quick story, uh, quick introduction about you, and yeah. how you got into programming Python. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, I, I guess like, you know, all the way from the beginning, I, um, I graduated with a degree in statistics and my first job was, you know, working as a data scientist, um, in Chicago. And like, that was kind of doing more like bread and butter sort of data sciencey stuff. Like, you know, like you pull data from like a database and like you train a model and then you like try to communicate yeah. the results with someone. And then, you know, at the time, it, yeah, it, I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but to me, it yeah. feels like it was like millennia ago. Te technologically like the, speaking, yeah, it's so different. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was like a, a really, really, really long time ago. Yeah, but then basically, like, what, what, what happens or what happened to me a lot was just like, okay, like, we need to, like, we're training this model, like, how do we share, like, share with, like, the relevant, like, stakeholders, right? There's like a PM or, like, someone that's interested in this, like, how do you, how do we, how do you make him care? And then there really wasn't a good answer, like, you would have to, like, you'd, like, compute like some metrics and then like try to explain what they mean and you like draw mm -hmm. like a bar plot or something and it just like wasn't really that that useful right and i think it, it really kind of was you know to be fair it was kind of like a skill gap i didn't even know how to like build like an interactive website to kind of share with people because like you know at the end of the day what really what people really care about or or how to make someone really care about it is that they can play with it right because like if you kind of show them these plots and these metrics it's like a machine learning model is like very abstract, right? It's like just this thing sure. that's somewhere else. And then like, this is kind of like the output of it, but it's not really even like the actual output. It's just like some sort of summary statistics of it. Um, right. But if you give someone like, this is what the model is and you can let them like manually play with the inputs and then see how the outputs change, you know, they get a sense of like, well, like what the model is and you sure. know how it works and, and stuff like that. Right. And I think, um, yeah, so the, that's kind of where I learned about this problem and, and why this problem is important. And then ever since then, I've been sort of devoting to, you know, devoting myself to working on like open source um, tools to like make data science like more efficient. And like my, my, the latest project that I worked on is called Gradio, which kind of yeah. does this. Um, it, it basically lets you turn a machine learning function into a web app in one line of code. And, and from there, you can kind of jump off and build like as complex of a web app as you want. But from the beginning, you can kind of get up and running with just like basically two lines of code. So, sure. yeah. Excellent. Kind of a little, a little yeah, bit about me. Well, the, you talked about, you know, let people play with the machine learning model and you know, change, change the inputs and stuff. It just completely changes the round trip speed because the alternative might be, I'll make, I'll get you a PDF. <laughs> And you can read right. the report. And then what if we change this? All right. At tomorrow's meeting, I'll bring the new PDF. <laughs> it's like, right. no, 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 no. Just empower people and give them these tools. And yet at the same time, data scientists are not web developers, certainly not in the super dynamic front end um, Ajax callback way of programming, right? That's a different skill to be sure. And so Absolutely. it's it's not like their data science skills is, by default make them able to build these and even if you could is it a good use of your time right yeah absolutely and um yeah i think like I, yeah so it's like the the pdf report is definitely like one one way of doing it the other way that we try to do sometimes is we'll just hand it off to someone and like we'll mm -hmm. we'll have them build the web but then that just takes longer you have to like explain everything to them right i think like the 
you know, the, the way to like kind of make it really impactful is if, you know, the, the person who made the model can they themselves, they can just create the, the web app, the demo like immediately. Um, and right, like, you know, a lot of these, a lot of data scientists are in Python, right? So that kind of means you need like a Python based tool that can kind of get you up and running really quickly. Um, and a lot of them, yeah, like you said, don't know about web programming. So you got to like abstract that away as much as you can, like as much as it makes sense. Um, so that they're sure. not like daunted or, you know, it's not like, okay, now I'm like, you know, like I'm really good at like, you know, PyTorch and training on like all these things. And like, now I need to learn about, you know, whatever, like servers and, and all that stuff. Sure. It's like, a, it's like a, yeah. almost a different skill set for a lot of people. It really is. And the hand it off to somebody else, it's also, it's slow, but also it only works for certain situations, right? right. Like a lot of data scientists, I spec don't have a whole software team supporting them <laughs> as exactly, they right. need, right? They're, yeah. they're the sole person. Uh, at their company. So you said you uh, had gone into statistics and found your way over to this this side of that world. Do you feel like it's kind of a golden age for statisticians now? Because when I went to college, it's like, well, you could be an actuary or you could work at an insurance company or maybe some other company might be interested in hiring somebody who does stats. You work at the you know US um, Census Bureau of Statistics. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was kind of, and, and now with the kind of blending into data science, there's just, you know, it's so in demand. So many it's like, it's, the yeah. world is so open for that now. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely became a, a much sexier career. And I think I kind of got lucky that I, I kind of got into it like right before, like right as it was starting to take <laughs> off. Like at that point, like data science wasn't really like a term yet. I'm not, sure. I'm not that old, but yeah, at that time it wasn't really like, there were like, I think at that point, like they were called like, it's like, research scientist was more mm -hmm. like the term, right? Which still kind of sounds a little bit dry, but then it got rebranded as data science. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a, I mean, I would say it's always a good time to study statistics. I think like a lot of people that, yeah, I think if, if someone were to come back to me and say like, I have no idea what I want to major in, but like I have some aptitude for math, I would say like major in statistics, I think it's like really useful um, as like a lot of applications. But I think now also in terms of like tech, I feel like definitely like it's sort of like the, it's the era of like the Renaissance person, right? Like you kind of have to know a little bit of everything now, right? Right. Yeah, so it's like do. stats, programming, um, math, like all, all these things are starting to like kind of blend it, blend together. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, like a, a lot of people really respect kind of like pull from all these disciplines, like seamlessly. Right. And I think it's, yeah, I think that's it's kind of where, where we fun. are now. Yeah. It's yeah. a super fun time. If, you're excited about always learning new things yeah. and, and and sort of bettering yourself and bringing in this thing and mixing it that way. If you'd rather just kind of be done learning, maybe not so much. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just show up for 20 years and it'd be okay. <laughs> I guess if you were like maintaining COBOL to code, it would be okay, but sure. not, not in the machine learning space. And machine learning also is just crazy. We've got large language models just running loose everywhere now. What do you think about all that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely like a very exciting time to be alive. I think um, it's pretty crazy that, you know, when I start when I got started in, in ML like six years ago, um, it was it definitely was like very niche, right? And like the tools that people use and like the language about it kind of definitely did not penetrate the mainstream. But now, you know, it seems like, you know, like the, the, the technologies and the algorithms, the models, the data sets are all things that people talk about now, right? And I think we've, we've all had an older relative ask us about, you know, chat GPT or, you know, like the latest trend or like uh, stable diffusion with the image, the AI image yeah. generation. I think it, it kind of has penetrated, you know, every part of society. I think part of, you know, I think like part of the reason why that is, is one, because like one, like the technology is like way more impressive now, right? Like these algorithms yeah. are able to do things that were, you know, unimaginable, like 2017, right? When I graduated college. Mm -hmm. um, but but also it's just like these models are much easier to share and use now. Right. And I think, um, you know, I think part of, part of the reason why ChatGPT is so took off so quickly, was just like the interface is so intuitive, right? Like we've been, is. We've, we've been chatting with each other for like decades, like over the internet. Right. And it, it kind of like the, the user interface is so simple and it kind of works. So, you know, it kind of like fits our mental model so quickly or so easily. Um, but you know, under the hood, it's like this incredibly complex process, right? All and, right, right. And yeah, um, right. And I think that's kind of like where tools like Gradio kind of come into play, right? It's just like 
um, there's a bunch of like incredible, like amazing research happening, but unless other people can, you know, use it, play with it, evaluate it, like it, it's almost as if it like it doesn't exist. Right. And I think radio yeah. really helps you create like a, a demo and app that other people can use and play with and evaluate your model. And then, you know, and, and then just like that, anyone can, can use it, right? Like, you don't, you no longer have to be like a technical person, you know, you don't have to like Python some script or something and then like go to like a website right you can just go to a website right you can just send someone a link and then right. they can play with it's, the state of the art it's pretty pretty cool you know can you control a combo box and a button yeah something like that right yeah then you're qualified yeah it's it's wild one of the things that surprises me is for such insane technology that leverages so many servers to you know chat gpt and friends the the user interface for it is so kind of mundane. No, I don't mean that as a derogatory term, but it's just like, well, you just talk talk to it in this text box, and it just talks. There's not like a crazy new UI where you, you know put on 3D glasses and work. But you just <laughs> it's just a chat box. But the what it does is incredible. Similar for Midjourney and other things. Right. You just you know slash imagine, just chat, yeah. just chat with it. But so it, there's this sort of um, weird paradox of like this incredible simple way to interact with it and yet what it does is i guess it's a natural way to interact with it which is what's surprising yeah i mean i think that part of the reason i think it's just like the, the natural language like interface i think a lot of people like resonate with that i think you don't you don't have to explain it right like you just just type something and then it'll, it'll respond right like it won't yeah. it won't error right and i think you know, even like stuff that isn't just purely chat based, I think, um, you know, like stable diffusion, uh, like the, the web UI, right? I think it's, you know, it has a lot of controls, right? But at the end of the day, it's kind of like a Photoshop-esque interface, right? Yeah. Where it's like yeah. someone who's used to that kind of software, like it's kind of what they expect, right? You like upload an, an image and then you like, you know, you can like get a tool to like blur something out and then like, you know, you can in-paint it or out-paint it and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so... Um, yeah, I think like the, you know, I, I forget who said it, but I think some, you know, someone said that like, you know, ML is like, it's like not really like the product. It's like the, it, it's kind of like in the background, right? Like, you know, like the, the most successful ML products, like don't really feel like they're ML, right? It's kind of like right. the ML is kind of like abstracted away and it just makes your experience like that much better. Right. And I think that's kind of what all these different tools are showing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. All right, so let's talk about Gradio, and I'm going to ask you to do something uh, a little bit funky to to kick this off. But let's let's talk about with just like what other apps are like Gradio. So things that come to mind for me are like Streamyard, for example. Streamlet. Um, sorry, that's what I mean. Stream, yeah, Streamlet. I'm reading the words of our <laughs> our app that we're using. Streamlet, not Streamyard. Streamlet and, and other. Just give people a sense of like what are what are the categories of apps that's kind of in the same space, so they can get a mental model for what radio is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think like Streamlit is a good comparison. Um, like Plotly Dash, I think is mm -hmm. also like uh, in, in the same um, uh, ecosystem, uh, you know, Shiny. Um, if, you know, I think. Shiny, you know, yeah. Yeah, I think like the first yeah, I just had uh, Joe on to talk about Shiny for Python. Uh, yeah. Recently, uh, yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah, I think it, it, it's it's kind of like, uh, yeah, they're all definitely in the same, in the same ecosystem, right? And I think, um, you know, if you go to the, the Gradio homepage, like, you know, Gradio.app, right, you you can kind of see some of the, the apps that you can build with Gradio really quickly. Yeah, uh, but that, yeah, but that doesn't necessarily like limit, like what you see on the landing page is not all that you can build with Gradio. I think it, those are just like the, the eye catching quick examples, just because, you know, like I said, like Gradio is kind of built to get these kind of examples up and running really quickly, but you can do like lots of lots of complex stuff with with Gradio. Excellent. Yeah. So we'll let's let's dive into it. So you've already given it a bit of a bit of a introduction for us. Maybe we could let's see. Maybe we could work on uh, just start by discussing how you might take. A, you've got some different types of problems you can solve on your homepage, and it shows you the code, the entire code, and uh, yeah, yeah. Then, then the UI that comes out of it. So maybe we could, you could just talk us through the sketch recognition. It's one of the types of UIs you could build here. So yeah. with the sketch recognition, you just well, you just kind of draw. Yeah. That's definitely yeah. a bird I drew there. Or a mountain, <laughs> I'm not sure. It could be either. <laughs> yeah, but I guess, you know, the how do you think about how how do you think about Gradio? Right? So Gradio is a 
you know, at the Python library, right? Python is the main language used to interface or to build right. radio so apps. Pip, pip install Gradio. Yeah, you pip right. install Gradio, right? And then what, what does Gradio do? At the highest level, Gradio turns a Python function, any Python function, into a uh, interactive web app, um, right? So when you think of function, right, function has inputs and outputs. Um, so in... Um, so these inputs correspond, uh, these inputs and outputs correspond to things that will be drawn on the page, right? And, and Gradio comes with a standard set of inputs, right? There's like text boxes, drop downs, you know, number fields, uh, data frames, you know, plots, anything like that, but also like drawing tools like a sketch pad. And then the output, um, you know, it can be, you know, it can be any of these other components, but it could also be like a label, right? To show like a machine learning prediction. Um, right. So all you need to do is take, you know, write a plain Python function that takes in a drawing and returns a set of probabilities or confidences. And then Gradio can kind of wrap that in one line of code and turn it into an interactive web app. Like, you know, like we see here, if you're on, on the YouTube mm -hmm. stream, you can kind of see what Michael is doing. You know, there's like a, a sketch pad area and then he can kind of scribble on it and then immediately uh, he'll get a prediction out. Um, yeah. From, let's uh, see if I can if I can draw an owl, maybe. Right, so it's Let's like, see okay. how I do. I don't know. Yeah, syringe. Uh, no. <laughs> we got to make the model better, right? So. It is. Um, it could be a cat. It definitely could be a cat. <laughs> I, I can see. Cat. I also, I got it. I think I got to make my drawing better. But so the idea is, you you have a regular function that takes the inputs and outputs. There's no UI whatsoever, and there's also no reactive programming. You're not like hooking events. Where where I redraw and it just reruns, right? That's not part of my code I write as a Python person. Right. And then you just say gr.interface, give it the function, and then you say the inputs are, in this case, you say it's just a sketch pad. And so I get this UI that I can draw on that I've been attempting to draw an owl on. Yeah. It probably missing the eyes. I think it's the eyes that are missing. There we a go. Ladder. Now, it's, <laughs> now it's a ladder. Uh, <laughs> it's not about testing the underlying model, is it? And then you say the outputs in our label. Now, a lot of UIs, people might think label is just a non-interactive piece of text. But here, there's more of a machine learning label, right? You've got like a cool um, yeah. bar, horizontal bar graph that has percentages and talks about its guesses. So it's like a, a, a machine learning labeled response right. report, yeah. not just a... That. <laughs> exactly that. yeah like i think uh like a machine learning person would when you when they see label they kind of think this right um right, they don't think right. of like the standard web you know like just like a, a text box right so yeah like label, label four type of thing and then right HTML, yeah right so the, the, that's one of the things that um or one of the ways that kind of radio kind of like is built for that kind of audience right it's like the the high level primitives are kind of kind of match that that mental model right and then um yeah so like one thing you mentioned earlier is that there's no like explicit reactivity that you as a programmer have to write. That's definitely true in the gr.interface case. Uh, gr.interface kind of like abstracts all that away from you, but Gradio also- So, so this is your simple case. Like I just want, just run this function with these inputs and outputs and I want a real basic variant, okay? Right, and then um, Gradio also offers like a lower level API where you can kind of like explicitly control the, the layout, right? So right now everything is like side by side. You could put them horizontally across columns, rows. You can add components, right? And then you can also, um, you know, be more explicit in saying like, okay, when this input changes, run this function, and then that will populate this and, and stuff like that. And you can kind of change these things together. So um, that makes yeah, sense. But, Maybe it's but yeah. expensive to it's expensive to generate some portion. You want to cache it as much as possible. Right. Or yeah, or you, you just want to like be have like more control over like exactly what happens when when things change, right? Um, you could Gradio gives you that that control, but for a lot of use cases, you can get you know you can get really far with GR that interface. And then the other companion piece, which isn't on the landing page because we just we just released it, you know, maybe like two weeks ago, is GR that chat interface, right? So you could build like oh, a interesting chat. to an you, LLM you could, or something. Yeah, you could build a chat UI uh, for like yeah like an LLM. Um, you know, uh, just in, in one line of code. And I think, you know, I can try to maybe find an example of that real quick. Sure. Um, yeah, while you're looking, do you do you offer any guidance or any opinionated stuff on which LLM to choose? Or do you just say, any? it's just a chat interface and you write the code to make it happen? Yeah, yeah, you, you just write the code to, 
yeah, just like give, given the, given the message, what's, what should the response be? And then right. that's, that's there's the some, interface. Yeah. And then, you know, there's some under interesting the hood, options yeah. people might want to pick. Obviously you could pick open AI as, and use their API, but there's things like private GPT, which allows you to ask questions about your documents, but a hundred percent private, right? You could just like give it, uh, you know, hundreds of docs and, and say, learn these and we're going to talk to you about it, you know, or, or something along those lines. There's the Lang chain, right? Yeah. There's yeah. Uh, which is a pretty interesting option. Uh, there's uh, these, these things. Llama, like the new yeah, Llama, Llama 2. The Llama 2. Yeah. So I think in the, in the chat, I just posted like a Gradio Llama 2 um, UI that okay. we can show. Um, yeah, it's sure. on Hugging Face. So I think we can kind of talk about the, the hosting on Hugging Face as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is the the chat UI. So it's uh, you know if you if you were to scroll down a little bit, it's just it's kind of like just a the UI says chat bot. I can type yeah. a message. Yeah. So. I'll ask it what the podcast is. Hey, I'm here to help you. Talk Python is a podcast and community dedicated to helping developers improve their skills, interviews and experts in the field. That's you, Freddie. And <laughs> <laughs> resources. Yeah. What What do you want to know? Um. Yeah, so under under the hood, this is using uh, Llama two seventy billion uh, LLM. Nice. Um, I can ask yeah, what the it's... latest episode is, so it gives me a sense <laughs> how far back it goes. That's about two years old. So okay, nice. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> oh wait, no, this is I'm not That's so sure about that. Right. It says, yeah. For, yeah, I think there's a little bit of a mismatch, but anyway, it's it's this is really cool. And so you basically plug in whatever LLM you want to into this and they, they put the, or you put the L the llama too. Exactly. Yeah. And then if you, um, if you go, um, you know, if, if you scroll up a little bit, uh, in the, in the website, um, if you, like you see those, uh, like three bars, I think. Yeah. The right. hamburger deal. Oh no, no, sorry. That's, that's not uh, it. Uh, um, and, uh, where is it? It's in, Oh, there are three dots maybe. Oh, I guess maybe because you don't have an account, you can't see the file. Oh, yeah. If you go to files, there. Yeah. If you go to files, uh, and go to app.py. This is the source code of the of the oh, radio demo. If you, okay. if you scroll, if you scroll down, so this is kind of just like the the helper text, and then this is the actual prediction function. It's about twenty lines of code. But if you scroll okay. down, you see the chat interface code. Um, so, there you go with gr blocks as demo. Yeah. Create a tab. And then, but yeah, like the, the important thing is that, you know, GR chat interface is just, it's just like a one line way to create a chat bot. Um, it's, it works similarly to the interface case, right? There's just a function uh, in this case that, you know, it, it's an LLM. So it handles like the, the responding to the each user message. And then you mm -hmm. just, you just call that and then you can kind of call launch and then you get a, you get a UI. Um, yeah. So oh, it's, nice. yeah. So you, you get like a, a chat GPT esque UI and, you know, in this case, you know, it's a hundred lines of code, but you know, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty simple. That is simple. And one of the things that's pretty cool here is for the, the chat section, you hook it to, um, the type you set up is a streaming type right. versus the, the place I type is a batch. And then the function you give it is a generator with yield keyword. So it just, as you go through it, it makes choices exactly. and sends them back. That's a, that's a pretty advanced interaction for the UI to be, to run in like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, the, you know, in order to get streaming, like there's no special syntax, you can just use the normal Python yield and then Gradio knows how to like, you know, feed that iteratively, uh, mm -hmm. you know, feed that to the, to the front end. And then you get like this responsive streaming UI. That's, that's a really good call out. Um, yeah. So it's, it's just kind of like the, you know, Gradio tries to use like the, the core Python syntax and the core Python data types as much as possible, mm -hmm. just so to make it easier yeah. for people to, to get up and running. So I, I just blew through this really quickly here, but basically from what I can tell is the, the amount of code here to actually implement this, that is not the, just the details of given this text, make the, the LLM do the thing is five lines of code. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's, that's Definitely true. That yeah. that should make people pretty excited about like, hey, I can write five lines of code, especially with an example to work from. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, definitely we need to get chat interface up in the in the landing page. But yeah, I think it's super easy to get complex demos, you know, running. I think it's just a hand, you know, handful of lines of code. Yeah. 
Um, we mentioned Shiny a little bit. Um, Umar asks, how does it compare to Shiny? How, how familiar with Shiny? Can you? I'm not can you super compare? familiar. No. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, honestly I'm, not familiar. I, I'm familiar with Shiny, but not well enough to compare it directly to Gradio either. I mean, they live in the same general world of trying to kind of create a, a UI that's that's yeah you don't have to write web apps for. Uh, but I, I don't think they're I don't think they're totally the same, but they're similar. Okay, so we talked about setting up pip install. That's easy. Um, you say you can choose from a variety of interface types. These are the widgets that you're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you could you could like in terms of, like the inputs and the outputs. You, you know, we we call them components. Uh, but okay. yeah, there's if you, if you go to the docs page, it's about we have about thirty something components. Um, wow, okay. For, yeah, so you, you know, code, you know, buttons, data frames, plots, you know, files, you know, pretty much like yeah. you name it. And you know, we're we're adding components all the time. And um, you know, we're also one of the things that we're gonna work on is letting the community create their own components. So like if you, you know, if you have your own particular demo, your own particular web app and you wanna like you want this new component that we don't support, like how do you we're we're working to make it easy for you to do that without having to merge something into Creative upstream, right? And then other people can play with it. So we're we're working on that as well. But for the time being, it's yeah about these like thirty something components, and then yeah, you can mix and match them however however you want. Yeah, you've got quite a bit of them. Uh, many of them, I expect people would imagine. So you've got button. Um, yeah. Let's see, you've got data frame, which is pretty cool. And then uh, the, the gallery plots. image, the plots, yeah. like the line plot, scatter plot, those are all pretty cool. But you've also got things like audio. What's the, what's the story with audio? You, this is how you. Yeah, you can upload like a, an MP3 or a, or a wave file, um, you know, yeah, directly maybe for or, transcripts or a sentiment analysis or something. Exactly, like uh, like whisper, essentially like uh, audio sure, okay. to, to you know transcription, or also just uh, synthetic audio, right? So there's like uh, bark, and there's all these like. Um, Kind of like machine learning demos that they go text to text to speech basically, and they're they're really advanced. So if you wanted okay. to display that, um, right, like you you ingest text, come out with audio, like you could use like an audio uh, output component, and then you oh, get like a yeah, you get like a you can, you can play the audio directly in the browser. Okay, I got it. So it's like a it's just like an audio tag in HTML, but ob obviously it does more from the UI, I'm sure. But yeah, it, it's to not just. I guess you would just do file if you really wanted to drop an MP3. But if if you wanted to generate audio and let people see the result, then this audio thing would be the the way to go. Yeah, and then you could also the audio could also be like the input, right? You could just drag a drop. You know, if, if you if you click on that box, it'll let you upload an, an audio if you have it, and then you could interesting. You could play I'm sure it. Sure, I right? have some audio. Yeah, I, I know that I have some, but how? Uh, let's see if I can find. Something to upload here. Here, I'll upload a sponsor. <laughs> here, let me, let me find one. Um, here, this is super short, so I can upload. Yeah, look at that, and it just becomes a player. Excellent. Yeah, and you can play it, and then you can also um, edit it as well. So, like, you see that little pencil? Mm -hmm. uh, you could like kind of trim it. Oh, uh, could you like like trim trim yeah. trim it to make it shorter? Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So, Very so nice. but, yeah, yeah. Lots of cool components like that that we have. Uh, you know. Yeah, all the standard form stuff like sliders and drop downs and um, yeah, like highlighted text for, and you know yeah. So the, the standard like form stuff, but then there's also like complex, you know, not complex, but more maybe um, domain specific ML stuff. So like highlighted text, for example, uh, like really big and like part of speech tagging, like NLP, um, right? So you can kind of get like a highlighted. Um, it's like depending on the the tag that you apply to each word in the text, you get like different coloring and, and stuff like mm. that. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, for MLP, like model 3D. So there's a lot of like ML yeah. demos that come out that, you know, you can generate model 3D assets directly. Um, so this lets you display them um, as well. So yeah, so everywhere, you know, we're, we, we have everything from like the most kind of basic general like web app stuff, to, like, you know, kind of domain specific machine learning um, yeah. components as well. Yeah, let's see what else uh, jumps out here. You have video as as well, which is pretty cool. JSON, yeah, there's a lot of what you can type in JSON. I guess it probably validates it and auto formats it something rather than yeah, just yeah. When you text. when you yeah when you return the 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 JSON, it like yeah highlights it for you. Um, you can copy it directly as well. So okay, so 
when we were talking about the Gradio dot interface thing, it had well here's an input and here's an output. It's plural, so could you have? Could I say there's a sketch pad and a text box? Yeah, as yeah, the so input, could... and then the outputs are, are I don't know three other things and. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a really good observation. Yeah, so you can have more than one input, more than one output, um, for sure, right? So like if you go to the, I think the time series forecasting demo, I think that one yeah. has like two inputs. That's right? also so on the can, homepage. Yeah, also yeah, yeah. on the on the homepage, right? So you can pick like, you know, it's like a toy example, like forecasting PyPy installs, but you could pick, you know, here it has two two inputs, right? Like the the time horizon. And the, the library itself, both of them are, are drop downs, right? And then when, right. when either updates, the the plot updates, right? So there's also like how you can do plotting in, in Gradio. Um, mm-hmm. And then also this is interesting. This is this demo is you know built with like the the lower level API. You could build it with interface if you wanted to, uh, but just as an example, it's built with like the the lower level API. Cool. Yeah. So I guess there's probably a a library and time span two arguments to the function that you write. And then just as you interact with these widgets, it just recalls it with whatever the values are. Exactly. And then uh, the function itself returns a plot. So in this case, it's a, it's a plot week plot, right? So by default, okay. or we, yeah, we, we, we ship with support for matplotlib, plotly, bokeh, um, and Altair. So I see. So if I would create um, like a matplotlib object, do all the stuff to it that I would do in a notebook instead of calling show, I just return it from my function and then it becomes yep. part of the UI. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. And this, this one happens to be done with profit, a time yes. series library. Yeah. You've got integration with a bunch of cool machine learning libraries here as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the cool thing is, you know, pretty much if you can write a Python function for it, like it'll work with radio, like there really doesn't need to be, um, you know, like us as a, the development team don't really need to build that many integrations uh, to get anything that you're working with to work with Gradio. Pretty much if you can call a write a Python function to do it, um, you know, and we have like the supported output types and stuff like that, you can you can display it with, with Gradio. Nice. Um, yeah, so yeah, there, there, uh, there's a couple of demos, for example, like connecting to like uh, like databases and stuff. You can connect to S3 if you want oh, to, interesting. right? Like you're not... Um, I don't, I don't know exactly where they are now, but yeah, yeah like that, it's got to be one. Oh, yeah, this looks like it might be one potentially. Now, um, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll click too so I find some S three stuff. Here's, yeah, there's got to be something here somewhere. Yeah, very cool. Um, so one of the things people may be wondering, and the fact that I don't see a pricing up at the top it might be a big hint here. What's the business model? What's the story with this? Is this this is just straight open source? Is it a uh, open yes. core? Like, what's the what's the story around your project? Yeah, here? so Gradio is you know uh, completely open source, um, and you can host it anywhere, um, so you're not tied into any any platform. Uh, Gradio did get acquired by Hugging Face, um, you know, maybe like almost two years ago, um, right? So Gradio integrates really tightly with the Hugging Face ecosystem. Um, but, okay, um, I see. all those, in, all the, those integrations are, are normally free, right? So for example, you could host radio demos on, on, um, on hugging face, on the hugging face spaces or something. Yeah. On, on hugging yeah. face spaces. Right. Um, and then if, you know, if you, if your demo needs like, you know, special like hardware or stuff like that, like you, you could pay hugging face to provision that for you. Um, sure. but you, but you're, you're not paying for the radio, right? Like you can. You know, it's it's kind of like you could you could use whatever you want on, on hugging face spaces now, right? It's not, it doesn't have Excellent. To be radio. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so, so, it's, so it's freely available. So it's completely open source. Yeah. With uh, kind of a a radio as a service via hugging space, hugging face. Hugging face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on their spaces. Say that fast a bunch of times. So yeah, really cool. One of the things people might not know if they haven't heard of radio before is if you go to your GitHub. Uh, repo for it 20 almost twenty one thousand github stars that's a that's some serious serious bit of uh attention that it's gotten yeah yeah definitely um uh we've seen a lot of growth in the last like yeah about year and a half like ever since like the hugging face acquisition um you know that's really helped us um you know kind of like put the library in front of like a, a new audience um yeah and, you know, as well, like, you know, with like the recent advances in ML, like a lot of, you know, people want to build 
demos for ML models now, right? So I think that that's definitely helping Gradio as well. Yeah. I'm trying to give people a sense of scale. All right, this is like a third of fast API, a third of third of flask. Like that that's a lot. That's a yeah, lot yeah. of uh, people using this. So um the reason I'm bringing that up is it's not some brand new thing that you came up that look came up with that seems kind of neat that maybe people could try, but it's it's got a lot of users, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, you know, months you know, month to month we're seeing like hundreds of thousands of people um building these radio demos. Um, you know, uh repeatedly. So yeah, definitely definitely a lot of growth. And yeah, radio is about five years old now, so it's not it's awesome. Not, Congrats. Know, yeah. That's that's yeah. really cool. That's not yeah, three point nine, almost four million monthly downloads. Yeah. That's that's a decent chunk. All right. Uh what do we think about? I don't want to do an image in one. <laughs> so uh, you can do other demos you got here. Is you've got time series forecasting. We talked about that as the multiple inputs. Um, yeah. XG boost with explainability. You want to tell us about this a little bit? Right. Yeah. So you know this is kind of yeah, this one also I think has like you know this one has like twelve inputs right and the idea is you know like it's one of like these like kind of Kaggle esque things where you like predict mm -hmm. income based on you know a slew of of predictors. Um, right. And then like the cool thing is that, you know, um, this isn't explicitly built into Gradio or, or yeah, this isn't explicitly built into Gradio, but you could, you could kind of hook into Shap really easily. Right. So if you, if you hit explain, um, it'll, it'll, it'll try to explain the prediction of the model and display it in oh, a plot okay. for you. Right. Wow, so, okay. right. So for those of you who don't know, like Shap is like this algorithm for explaining, uh, you know, the predictions of like any machine learning model. And I see. in this case, it's hook, it's hooking into XG Boost, um, right? But there isn't like an explicit, um, you know, in this demo, there isn't like a, an explicit radio feature that's being used. It's just kind of calling Shap directly from this Python function and then displaying the results as a, as a plot. So you, cool. you can so kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what people, what this thing does is it's got a bunch of different sliders and drop downs. It says, given an age, uh, your your um, education level years of school, whether you're married or not, all those male, female, how many hours a week you work. And then it predicts, what is this like? Yeah. Predicts your, your yearly income. Yeah. And then this thing you're talking about is with that model, you can ask it, okay, well, of all these different things we could put into it, what, what features, what aspects of that are more important and what are less important. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, right. Like, and then, yeah. So, you know, like the use case is like, you know, let's say like you are a data scientist that, you know, is charged with, with building this kind of model. Um, you know, you, the, the first question after someone seeing the, the prediction is, you know, someone might have is like, why? Like, why is it predicting yeah. this, right? And then, you know, you, you ideally want to like be able to explain exactly what what element of the predictors contributed to the prediction the most. Um, and there's a lot of tools that you can use for that, right? Shap is, I think, like the most well-known to my, to my understanding. Um, and then, yeah, and then you can kind of just with Gradio really easily just like call that algorithm and then just display it in, in a plot, right? And then, you know, in, in, in this example, like one of the inputs is like the capital gain. So like how much you make on your investments, right? So and I think in this particular case, like the capital gain is like really big, right? So obviously right. like because the capital gain is so big in this particular case, we predict that the income will be, will be really big, right? Because capital gain is pretty much, you know, it's kind of synonymous with, with income really, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that that's kind of what what this is showing. Um, but yeah. But yeah. It, and I suspect this is important for for a lot of reasons. You know, if if you were if you're building this for your company or for some kind of project, people want to know. Well, we have all these different inputs. What ones actually matter in making a prediction? Maybe only the top three are the ones that really matter, and you can throw out things like marital status. Like it actually doesn't mo yeah. make much of a difference, right? Or if you're a policy person and you're, you know this model actually matches real data, you could say, well, we're trying to improve the policy for a certain group of people. We could focus on any of these aspects. Which which one or two would make the biggest return for our effort to to make a change? Right. A lot, there's a lot of cool stuff that comes out of this. I think. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And then, like you as a, as a developer, I think it's you know it's like the the data scientist, right? It's really easy to to make this kind of thing, right? Like this is like a, a GR interface, I believe, right? So this is just one yeah. line of code to to build <laughs> to build this. So yeah, let's see here. Oh, no, I think it's more. Yeah. So Somewhere. this is not not oh, not, this is the other one. 
Yeah, this yeah, is not, okay. not, not GR data interface. This is, uh, you know, the other API that we can talk about now is called Blocks. Uh, but yeah, yeah, tell you us can about kinda, that. It's, it's yeah, cool. so yeah, the, the way that it works is that you declaratively define your UI, right? So it's like this input is going to go in this column and you can kind of say like, well, this input is like a, a dropdown, for example, right? So in this example, you know, there's lots of dropdown components, lots of sliders for the age and, and stuff like that. And then you kind of like define all these components and then you can kind of define the reactivity separately. So if you were to scroll down, you'll see uh, like there should be like a button dot click, right? So whenever the predict button gets clicked, um, yeah. So you call this function with these inputs and then return this this one thing. Um, yeah. So that that's kind of like the model, right? Like right now it kind of looks like a lot of code just because there's a lot of like inputs and stuff. But at the end of the day, it's like pretty simple. You're just defining yeah. a UI and then you define like what happens when and then Gradio handles the rest. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. So if people listen, basically the UI for the more advanced version is you use context managers, you create width blocks. So then you'd say, you know, here's something that goes across and with another row, put some columns in there with another row. And then that's kind of how you build it up. So it's pretty straightforward. You know what it reminds me of a little bit is it reminds me a little of Flutter. Are, are you familiar with uh, how Flutter looks? No. And the code? It's, um, I don't know if I can find a quick example, but um, how about an example, Flutter? Come on. <laughs> There's, um, it's really sort of hierarchical so that the, the, the thing that I think is interesting is the, the code hierarchy um, matches the, the, the sort of UI hierarchy, right? So it's kind of uh, a code-driven UI where as it gets more indented, that talks about like, okay, well, that's a row or and then you oh, kind of pop see. off and stuff. And they've got, it's real similar in that sense that it's kind of all right there in the code. There's not a designer or a markup language or something like that, but yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. So like the UI, it's all, it's all declarative, right? So you, yeah, like you said, you just kind of say like, this is this row. And then, um, yeah, there's ways to control like the, the relative width of each of these columns, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you wanted that you, you could, and then, um, yeah. Another thing I saw, I can't remember what your demo is, so I'm not going to pull it up, but I saw that there's, um, there's a way to pass like CSS and styling over as well. Is that right? Yeah. So there's a uh, first thing. Yeah. So there's like a, um, there's a Python API for uh, like defining the theme, right? So like every UI okay. element has certain CSS variables and you can control their value um, via, um, via like the, the values of this Python class that you then pass to your Gradio instance. Uh, but at the same time, you, there's like a top level CSS parameter that you could kind of, you know, you can kind of do whatever you want in that case, right? You don't have to use like the Python API if, if you don't want to, like if there's something different that you want to change, um, you can you can change, um, you know, via these, these CSS uh, variables. Um, okay, so I, you're saying I could do something like in Python, I could say, well, the style is button border width is three and the color of the border is, is blue. But if I just want to have arbitrary CSS, I can just go, here's your arbitrary CSS string. Go with that. Yeah, you, you, could, you could pass it a, a file and then like it'll, we'll read that file and use that CSS um, in, in the demo. Um, yeah, and then okay. with that, you, could, you can also kind of like uh, add um, IDs to each of the UI elements. And then, you know, you could write your CSS to target the IDs that, that you add, right? So like, let's say like mm -hmm. you only wanted to modify like one button, um, you, could, you right. could do it that way, so. Right, so you want to control, control one of the plots or something. I guess if you're writing arbitrary code to return things like matplotlib plots, you could do things like the XK CD matplotlib <laughs> style. Oh yeah, for sure. Right, like you could you could control. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of joking, but it's also awesome. But uh, no, I mean, there's a <laughs> there's an XK CD Gradio theme, right? So you mean. Let me show you. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So, right. So, <laughs> okay. That, well, that takes it to another level. That's that, pretty excellent. Yeah. So, that, that's the cool thing about like the, the theming is that it's shareable, right? So, uh, sure. someone someone built this XKCD wow, theme. Amazing. And then um, so anyone cool. anyone can use this in their in their radio demo, right? Like, all you have to do is pass theme equals, you know, GSTAF slash XKCD. And then your demo will look like the XKCD theme. Um, so good. I love it. Oh, yeah. my gosh. This is yeah, wild. Like, yeah, completely uh, community-driven. So, 
Yeah, yeah. well done to whoever did this yeah. one. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, so okay. if you yeah, so it goes beyond the plot, right? You could, <laughs> you could you could for sure return a plot <laughs> in the XKCD theme, but you could also have the whole demo in the XKCD theme. You know, I I often pull this example up this this theme this XKCD thing for Matplotlib because because it's fun, but also I think there's genuine value in putting together something that looks like this because if you show this to decision makers, you know, bosses, managers types and they see that they look at the, something that looks like it's working and they're like oh well we're done then like no 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 we have two <laughs> months more of work we're not done but i click the button and it's giving me answers we're really not done you know it's it's not um scalable it's not this it's not that right it's only an estimate but if you put just an xkcd front end on it you're like look you see it's not done it's just it's got squiggly <laughs> lines it's hand drawn it's clearly a prototype you're like oh yeah okay but but i could see where this is going i think actually psychologically it may have a big impact even uh, though it's silly you know yeah it's a super interesting point I never thought about it that way but yeah i mean i think it, it definitely gives it a little bit more like you know uh like sketch sketch vibes you know like this is yeah like, yeah uh, like a wireframe vibe yeah. yeah yeah wireframe like straight from the workshop like yeah exactly yeah then that's that's what i was thinking because i presented projects to various stakeholders when I used to do that kind of stuff and they'd be like, Oh, well that looks like it's kind of done. Like, no, we're going to need some time because it's, it's really not done. You, <laughs> I know it looks good, it, but it's not. Yeah. yeah you, you, made, you made it look too good basically. Yeah, exactly. That was a serious mistake. Yeah. Okay. So we got a little bit more time to talk about a couple of things. Uh, I want to talk about how people actually share this. You know, like we're still talking about a thing I pip install locally and it, it has a yeah. UI, but what do I do? I still don't want to set up a Linux machine and, um, nginx and domains yeah. and all that so what are the options but before we get to that uh tell us a bit about the internals like when i when you guys work on gradio and i pip install it like what what's running what what is this project yeah for sure so the the back end is a it's a fast api server so what Gradio will do it'll it'll spin up a server for you and then um, that server will serve like the front end assets. The the front end is built in Svelte, um, and then okay. uh, yeah, and then basically whenever you whenever these like reactivity events happen, um, what, what what that'll happen is that, or what will happen is that the the front end will just call the the back end API and then run your function and then you know make sure that all the necessary like processing that needs to happen to get your data ready um, happens. But you know at the, at the end of the day, it's kind of a simple model in that in that sense, right? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, there's like some some more complications with you know like the streaming, for example. It's like, that's like a whole kind of different code path almost. But at the end of the day, it's kind of like a a REST server that's you know talking with like a a, a, a JavaScript client. So it's kind of like the standard developer tools uh, story for Python people is it's not some of it is Python, but you probably end up writing a lot of JavaScript or TypeScript. Yeah, to, like most to build of the, this tool yeah. for other people, right? <laughs> so they yeah, don't like have the, to. Yeah, the I'm not, I'm not a huge Svelte uh, expert. Uh, like, thankfully, there's a lot of, some of the people I work with are like really good at uh, you know the really knowledgeable on that stuff. And like, yeah, like the front end code. I think it's I think there's more Svelte code than Python code. Actually, I'm curious like what the what what's the language the, sets the are. Down? Let's yeah. break it down. Oh, it's Sixty five percent Python, sixteen percent no, Svelte. Man. 13% must be, TypeScript. Well, so I think the reason might be that um, we have a lot of like demos and stuff that, um, yeah. Yeah, 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 a, yeah, yeah, I think there might be yeah, some Yeah, the demos that, are in there. Yeah. Yeah, there's you a know lot what of feature uh, GitHub needs. As you navigate the source tree, right, when I click on like client or demo or Gradio, it would be awesome if those stats would also be repeated, but just for mm -hmm. that section of code, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Like how much of the demos are Python? I don't know. Maybe I just want to know that, but that'd be cool. Anyway, yeah, so I suspect that is, there's probably a lot of code and you've got a lot of notebooks and stuff in there too. That probably puts it yeah. Big, uh, but yeah. Big but yeah, the, 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 yeah, like a, a lot of the code is, is actually, uh, yeah, yeah, JavaScript spelt. Right. Um, it's, it's the, you, you know, take one for the team so the rest of us don't have to write <laughs> JavaScript. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, Interesting. Very nice. And, it says it can be embedded in a notebook, which is interesting, or it can be presented as a web page. And tell us about this part. Right. So, um, if you were to run this on any notebook, uh, 
you know, like Google Colab, for example, I think this might mm -hmm. be an example, right? So if you call like the way that Gradio works, right? Like once you create your Gradio interface um, or blocks, um, once you call launch, that's kind of how you start up the server. That's how you, you know, you kick off the whole process of, of serving this. Um, that'll create the server locally, right? So like no data is like leaving your machine, um, right? And then if you click, if you call launch on like a Jupyter Notebook, Colab, SageMaker, like the UI will display like in, in the notebook, right? Um, right, and then you could, if, if you're doing locally as well, like the, you know, you can kind of go to like the local host URL and, uh, you know, go to the server that way. And then like the really cool thing is that, um, yeah, there you go, there's a UI. Um, nice, okay. Uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of what we mean that it's like embedded locally. Um, and then if so, if it, you... it little, feels good, like a little bit like the um, like i i widgets. It's it's similar to that, right? Like it, it'll display mm. right underneath the cell, right? And then if you if you run the cell again, like you'll get like a new like a new server, basically, right? So you can kind God, of okay. you can iteratively build these things, right? Um, and Is then... it running fast API somewhere in the background when you do that? Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nuts. <laughs> Turtles all the way down. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, so then th that's kind of like what we mean that they can be embedded in a notebook. Um, and then you you could also like host it anywhere, right? So you could um, you could you know if you have your own if, you, if your machine is you know exposed to the internet, right? You have like a fixed IP address. You could just kind of give people that URL. Um, you could also share it another way, right? Like so. Uh, Every Gradio interface is like a launch method. That's what, what kicks off the server. And that takes a parameter called share, right? So if you hit share equals through, true, um, that'll create like a, a temporary link for 72 hours so you could share with someone, right? So you don't have to, you could host it right on your laptop if you wanted to, as long as your laptop is available. As long as you leave like, it on, yeah. Yeah, as long as you leave it on, it's like not sleeping and stuff, like people can can access your your demo. So if you go if you go back to the Colab notebook, I think we might be able to like demo that. Um, oh, so I see. Yeah, so if you go if to I launch, just stay here and say share, share equals, equals true, true and rerun it. Yeah. So uh, if you scroll gonna... all the way down. Uh, yeah, so yeah. you see uh, Gradio, Gradio .live, right? So if you click that, uh, that, wow, you that know, totally you could, works. Yeah, you could <laughs> slap that to whoever you want and they can just use this. Right? Okay. So that, yeah, like no, like no install needed, right? Like if, you, if, you, if you're sharing this with your collaborator, your PM, your, you know, manager, your friend, you know, whatever, you could just give them this link, right? So you don't, you don't have to like do anything. Um, so to, to get yeah, it. you, I guess it's probably worth emphasizing. You should never try to host like production stuff over this. It sounds like, cause it's only for yeah. a limited time and it's, it's going to, it's just a good looking URL, but so often you'll be in meetings over Zoom or something else, and they'll be like, "Hey, what have you done? Can you show me?" And then you're like, "All right, well, let me do screen sharing." Oh, oh I don't have. I'm not a host. Can you make me a host now? Can I, I? You're sharing. Can I share? And then finally, you get it up, and it's blocky, and they're like, "Oh, zoom in. It's too small. I'm on my phone." You know, this way, you just take that and you give it to them in the meeting, right? And they, they have a full fidelity thing they can play with, which is awesome. Yeah, they you know they have the demo itself that's running on your machine, right? So they yeah, don't have yeah, to. Yeah. You know, like yeah, like no, you don't have to install anything, right? It's just just go to your point your browser at this URL, and then yeah, it'll it'll work for that that quick demo. Um, yeah, exactly. Use case as well. Yeah, definitely don't use it for production. Um, yeah, if you wanted to use you know for production, I think you know like the easiest, the absolute easiest way is to use Hugging Face Spaces. Um, mm -hmm. So if you go to Hugging Face Spaces, it's it's basically like a drag and drop, right? Like all you have to do is just drag your Gradio script into like their UI and then that'll upload it. And then like Gradio will already be installed and then like the server will will start and then like you, there you have, you have your, your permanent hosting. Um, and then it's also like, a, it has like a Git interface, right? So like your demo has like, you know, several files, like directory, there's like some assets, some images that you need that you want to like upload as well. Like you could just like get pushed to your hugging face space. And then, you know, you'll, you, you can do it like that as well. So. Okay. So you um, yeah, add like, it as an origin or something, and then just push to it. Yeah. So um, yeah, I could try to show. I don't know if you can uh, have a. Can I share my screen? I wonder. Yeah. Sure. Click at the bottom. Uh, and, um, share. Pick. pick it's easier if you share an app. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm sharing this. Uh, whatever you know. But if I go to like my Hugging Face account, um, I can. Uh, Go here and then new space. And then this is talk Python demo. And nice. MIT. Oh, yeah. 
and do then, whatever you want with this. Yeah, right. So you could right, you could host <laughs> stream like radio, you know, um, Docker, yeah, you know, anything you want, right? So for free, you know, very generous free tier, you have two. That CPU. is a generous free tier. Two yeah. CPU, sixteen yeah. gigs. Yeah, and then oh, good. Um, yeah, and then the only caveat is that this will go to sleep after like. 72 hours if no one uses it right so but you know you, you could also like upgrade you know if you you have a machine learning model you need a gpu you can pay for the gpu per hour um and then yeah you just sure. have public or private and then you just create space and then yeah this is kind of how the get interface remote works right so you could just get clone this and then add your code and then just get pushed or yeah. you could just copy this um, copy the code and just paste it yeah. into a file yeah Add file. It does feel file. A very Git like, right? It even has the similar look and feel of like yeah. you go to Git and you say add new file. Exactly. Yeah. So, hello. Um, talk Python. And then, and then True, a build. perfect commit message. No, <laughs> no comment, just blank. I love it. <laughs> and then we'll, uh, Give it a, to, give it a second to provision yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah that's and pretty cool. Should be. That shouldn't take too long. So over here, they run in Docker containers or Kubernetes yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it's a, a Docker container. So what this is doing, it's that it's uh, it has like a pre-configured Gradio Docker image, right? That comes with uh, there we go, it already built, but it, it comes with Gradio um, and you know like a bunch of standard um, like data science libraries, um, and then you. Uh, right, and then like it'll, and then it, it adds your code to the container, and then it starts the container, right? But you could also just use your own Docker file if you wanted to. Um, okay, so you can post whatever you want, right? So here, uh, let's say, yeah, you got to put your name in a present. Wow, look Michael, at that, Michael. Yeah. So yeah, so All right. that, so in the time that we've been talking about this, you've yeah. created a, a space and a host, created a new UI and hosted it. That's, that's yeah. pretty ridiculous. Yeah. And then you could just you know share this, share that. Uh, Stuff share the around. URL or whatever. Yeah. yeah, you can just share the URL there, and then you know they have like a um a, a machine learning app that they could they could share they could use with with you know they could share with anyone and it'll it'll stay up. Um, yeah, and like it's just Git, right? So if you if you have Git locally, if you know how to use Git, you can very seamlessly use you know push to the Hugging Face platform. There's no no awesome. special. Yeah, magic. yeah, that's super cool. Yeah. So right, what if I'm you, not a hug? What if I'm well, not a hugger? What if I, yeah. if I, for some reason, don't want to use Hugging Face, can I host this uh, behind Nginx or somewhere yeah. if I, I like infrastructure or I'd like to do my infrastructure as a service? Yeah, no, absolutely. You, you could just, uh, just that app that py file, um, right? Mm -hmm. Just call, you know, Python that app that py from your, your cloud and then just make sure that the URL is, you know, the port is accessible over the internet and then you just get that. Technology. Right, right. Or front that with Nginx and put yeah, some, exactly. Uh, let's encrypt and then just, Point it over to that URL and let it go. It'd be pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. So you could you could host it wherever you want. It's just you know it's mm -hmm. it's all open source tech under the hood, right? It's just fast API, spelt, and then some Python libraries, right? There's no right. there's no lock in anywhere, right? Yeah. Cool. So it's probably running UVicorn, I would yeah. guess, uh, as the the server, which is production ish. I guess you if you did like really large scale, you might want to do G G Unicorn uh, with the UV corn workers or rather than just UV corn itself, but you know, for the failover and whatnot, but yep. still that sounds like a, if, if you know, if these words sound familiar to you, it should sound really familiar. And if they don't, then don't worry about it. Right. Yeah, exactly. But if, if that's the standard Python web infrastructure stack type of stuff. Right. Okay. So in, in that model, it's, it's completely free, right? It's open source. I can do, I can just run it there. Right. Yeah, you just run it, run it wherever you want. Okay, yeah. Very nice. Well, Freddie, let's wrap up our conversation, get a little short on time with just where things are going. We talked about where we are, where it came from, where are we yeah. going. Yeah, no, that's, uh, yeah, thanks for, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for that. So I think, um, like, where we are, so I think we're trying to get Gradio into, like, as many platforms as, as possible, right? So, um, and like as many kind of like deployment modes as possible. So like one of the, the cool projects that we're working on is Gradio Wasm, right? So like running Gradio hmm. entirely in the browser. Um, wow, okay. So yeah, so that's like, it's not ready, it's not released yet, but it's 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 something that we're, we're actively working on, right? So you can, um, yeah, so if, if you wanted to like, uh, you know, just build your machine learning demo 
uh, running everything directly in the browser, right? There's like the, the ML for the web space is growing a lot. It's advancing really quickly. Like we're, we're getting ready. We're getting ready, ready for, ready for that. Um, so the, uh, so the, what's that look like in terms of foundations? Is that Pyodide? Is that yes. PyScript? Is that something else? It's using Pyodide um, uh, right now. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I think that, yeah, that, that's kind of how. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty good choice because one of the selling points of Pyodide, not just that it has Python in the browser, but that it has the ability, it has a bunch of the machine learning libraries either available or compiled over to WASM yep. WebAssembly. And so you can actually do machine learning stuff, not just like, hi, my name is plus name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's one of the cool projects we're working on this year. The other uh, cool project that we're working on is, um, yeah, like the custom components, right? So like, let's say that you wanted to, you know, build your, your, your own custom machine learning demo, your own custom web app, right? But you, you need something that we don't have. Uh, giving you the API to kind of build that component locally and then just kind of hook it into the app uh, without having to like merge anything into Gradio upstream. Uh, so we're, we're working on that actively. So that, that'll be really exciting. And then, uh, yeah, really excited just because it'll enable like a, uh, a lot of people like in the Gradio community to kind of collaborate with each other and kind of build like really impressive stuff um, kind of yeah. like on their own, right? Like they don't, they don't need like, they don't need like the core development team necessarily sure. to build like, stuff. Kind of like PyTest plugins rather than trying yeah. to change PyTest. Exactly, right. Um, okay. so, so that, yeah, really excited about that. And then, um, yeah, I think, I think like the, the, other, the other cool stuff is that, you know, we're, uh, one thing that we didn't talk about that I, I kind of want to talk about if we, if we have time is that, you know, mm -hmm. all, these, all these demos that we've, we've built are sort of available via API, right? So if you click on any of these demos, like if you click on that first one, um, if you scroll to the bottom and you see it says use via API, right? So this gives you like a little code snippet um, as to how you can call this demo, um, you know, from Python or JavaScript, um, okay. right? So like, what, like, like what, what does that mean, right? Like that means that basically all these like ML apps that are available on a Hugging Face or just anywhere on the internet, like they now become like building blocks that you can use in your own workflow, right? So. Um, and th actually, this demo itself, it's, I'm familiar with it, is actually really cool because it's, it's calling two other Gradio demos via API, right? So this is an example of someone building their Gradio app by calling other Gradio apps, right? So Wow, okay. Yeah, so like we're, we're kind of creating this, this ecosystem like where... like Gradio microservices. Exactly, right? So it's like all these Gradio apps or building blocks that you can then kind of connect together via API. Um, okay. And that's really cool, right? Because like it, it basically means that uh, machine learning is available, you know, like you don't, you don't need to use the GUI to get state of the access, state of the art machine learning, right? You could kind of like use an API and that means that you could put these models like pretty much anywhere, right? So like one of the cool things that we launched two weeks ago, I believe, or like a week and a half ago is that um, you can deploy any, you can deploy like a, a Gradio chatbot to Discord, like just one line of code, right? So like, like if you, let's say if you have a Gradio app that, you know, talks with like, you know, OpenAI, like GPT-3 or Llama or, you know, any of these like open mm -hmm. source LLMs, if you can build a Gradio app for it, you can like seamlessly kind of like hook it into your Discord server, right? So, uh, and then that's all built via this like API functionality, right? So this okay. is something like, yeah, cool. I'm, pers I'm personally like super excited about it. Um, like we want to kind of like push this further um, just because it's like, you know, Gradio is that you like Gradio historically has been built for the UI, but it could also kind of be used to get these machine learning models into more places. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of one of the things that I'm really excited about in, in the coming years, yeah. kind of making this a little bit more um, a little bit more you visible. Integrate, getting, yeah, you could integrate some really cool um, LLMs and other other types of chat into your right into your into WhatsApp. Discord. I imagine you could yeah. probably do it with uh, Slack as well, and. If somebody asks in your company, how do I, whatever, you could think it go, hey, I've already, yeah. I'm private GPT. I've already ingested right, all exactly. of our docs. Well, you want me to take a shot at answering that? Like, well, sure, yeah. why not? You know? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's kind of, yeah. That's, well, like, that's one of like the, the pet projects I want to do is just do that for like the Gradio Discord, right? So there's like a Gradio mm -hmm. Discord where you could chat with the Gradio community and there's like people ask questions in it, but it'd be really cool if we had like a Gradio chatbot that like knew a lot about radio that then you could just exactly. ask right like at at bot or like slash radio chat like what you know like how do i 
whatever. How do I display a plot, right? And then it'll tell you, oh, just just return a map plot lib, you know, from your function. Right. So, and so. people could think, well, why don't I just use ChatGPT or something? But you know, these are the you teach it like deeply about you give it all the docs <laughs> and you say, right. study this and then then I want to ask you about it. Right. And um a lot of times the docs and other things go beyond the token level that the standard models can take. Like I've tried to get chat GPT to tell me about transcripts on talk Python and it, it can't even adjust like one transcript before it runs out of space. Like I can't quite load all that. It's like, well, that's, I wanted to ask you about all of them. You can't even do <laughs> one. So this is not working for me. Exactly. Right. So yes, yeah, so you can yeah. fine tune like an open source LLM and then host it wherever you want. Right. So yes, that's, exactly. That's, that's, that's yeah. More control. Yeah, that's cool. So you could teach all about radio. Um, real quick question. Mr. Magnetic in the audience asked, what about a hugging face desktop app instead of the browser app? Yeah, so that's something that there's a, there's an open issue for that. It's something that we've kind of been kicking around as well. It's just like how do we get um, you know like a radio desktop app as well. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. I think uh, let me try to find that issue and then comment in the YouTube. But um, yeah, I would love your thoughts on that. If you know if anyone has thoughts on that, but yeah, we it's something we're thinking about. It's not. I don't think it'll happen. Maybe in the next like month or two, but maybe before the end of the year or next year if it could happen. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that pretty well covers it. It's a super exciting project. So good luck with it. I mean, already you've had a lot of luck with it, so you don't need my, my wishes. But further good luck uh, on that. And yeah, before we get out of here, let me ask you a final question here. If you're, you know, I always ask, like to ask the guests of like some cool PyPI project they've run across that's been really awesome. Maybe not super popular, but is it's really kind of made a difference or you've like, wow, how did I not know about this? Any come to mind for you? Python project? Yeah. Yeah. Like a, uh, something uh, I can pip install. I think like uh, fast API, but not fast API. Yeah. yeah. Does that. I think uh, one of like, I think when I was just starting out, I think I, I was like a really big noob and like, I, I always like ran into like environment issues and then, a friend of mine showed me about like pip depth tree and like it shows you exactly like oh, yeah. why things get installed and um yeah i think it's really i think it's really magical honestly <laughs> yeah i think it's really helpful um just to like figure out like you know especially like when you know when someone files an issue and like they, they, we don't know like what's wrong with them like sometimes yeah. i'll just like you know like where did this thing even come from and then just use like pip depth tree i think that's it's really yeah, cool it's, it's really simple uh, but yeah, I think it definitely has saved me a couple a couple hours of time. So yeah. That's cool. I, I've used it for my own stuff. I hadn't thought about using it for tech support, but yeah, of course, because often people run into problems because their environments are screwed up and they say they have a thing or they don't, or they say they have a version of a thing, but they don't, <laughs> you know? And with this, you can just, just say run this one command and it'll give you like a really cool, they have all these things installed and this is installed because it's required, because it is, you know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's really nice. Yeah. Cool. So Excellent it's... recommendation. Cool. All right. Final call to action. People want to get started with Gradio. What do you tell them? Yeah, pip install Gradio and then uh, go to gradioapp.com and then yeah, see see the demos there. Um, uh, in our website, there's a link to our Discord server. So yeah, uh, join the Discord um, and say hi. And then yeah, there's lots of people there uh, who are willing to help. And then uh, yeah, never hesitate to file an issue. Um, but yeah, I think What's really cool about this is like seeing the, the demos that people build and like people build stuff that I, you know, frankly, like push the limits of what I thought people could build with, with Gradio. And it's, <laughs> it's really cool seeing that. So yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah. Like don't be, don't be afraid to, or don't hesitate to build really cool stuff with Gradio and think, well, we're really good about amplifying that. So if you have something really cool, just like tag the, you know, Gradio Twitter account or reach out to us on discord or something, we'll, we'll amplify it for you. Cool. Well, excellent project. And thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Michael. I had a lot of-